So we've all heard over the last few days that footballer Benjamin Mendy has been cleared of all his charges. He has since now signed for French team Laurent on a two-year deal. The same is also true when we look at the actor Noel Clark. Again, he's another one who's been cleared of all allegations and has since he's since suing the Guardian for damages of over ten million. This is to account for his loss of earnings due to the false articles that they published in which harmed his career. And these are just two recent ones that have been on the news. There have been others, I'm pretty sure you all know of some of them. But they both show in the case of Benjamin Mendy and Noel Clark that even though they've been found not guilty, let's be honest, it doesn't even matter. Their reputations have been damaged to the point where I really don't believe they're gonna their career will be the same ever, ever again. Especially when we look at Benjamin Mendy for the reason I'm gonna state now, because we look at an athlete, the lifespan of an athlete, it's not a long one. Now he hasn't played in two years, he's approaching thirty, so when you look at athletes when they hit that side of thirty, the other side of it, it's pretty much downhill from there. And he's now been released from Man City, signed from a new team which is nowhere near of the same calibre for a two year deal. And in order to get back to the top or get back to the, at least the same equivalent level that he was at, the question is, will a team actually want to risk signing him because of all the baggage? Again, this is despite him being cleared of all charges. Football clubs, especially look at Mason Greenwood as another example, despite the fact that he's been found not guilty, a jury of his peers has found him not guilty, a lot of clubs are going to be like, hmm, do we want to take the chance? And they don't have to. But it just shows you exactly what happens once these things get out there, these false claims or when these claims are found to be not true. His career will never be the same again. I could be wrong, but I really don't think that's the case. And it just shows that the legal system needs reform. This is so that both names are protected until the verdict of guilty has come out. Because let's be honest, if it's found not guilty, it should all be protected on the lock and key. If it's found guilty, then that's when names should be released and et cetera, et cetera. But until then, both names should be kept protected and they should be anonymous, especially in this day and age where you have try by social media, because this is what this has been. Try by social media and these companies are, you know, they, they understand the public perception and brand deals and brand endorsements and how it looks on their um, company, looks on their brand. So they will make sure that they don't, their brand don't want to be harmed due to reputation by basically an employee. And <laughs> this is what's happened right now. So, by reforming the legal system to make sure that both parties, their names are protected, that would ensure, or at least help in my opinion, because I know these things sometimes get out here with all, you know, how media like flipping scavengers, how they try and get everything that they can do. But at least this will help ensure that their reputation for the most part isn't going to be damaged by bogus false claims or claims which can't be found beyond a reasonable shadow of a doubt to be true. And I picked up an article in which it was a woman's article, Glamour, in which it was complaining about the men's reaction to the verdict and how there was saying that this is just highlighting the misogyny that takes place and all this kind of other things. And then like, it's like in typical fashion, there was no consideration at all for the other side. Now I understand that they'll have it, they come from their own viewpoint, but I couldn't imagine sitting inside Benjamin Mendy's shoes in which he's been falsely accused of something like that. And especially him being famous, the spotlight must have been a thousand times worse than the average man. And yet the article only highlights the fact of, oh, this is the culture of how men treat women. And it brought up an example of Benjamin Mendy's escapades with numerous women. But I'm like, they completely ignore the obvious fact or the obvious thing that these women knew exactly what they were there for. They went there for a specific reason. A lot of the WhatsApps that you saw in the text messages, even after the fact with a certain woman, they knew exactly what they wanted. They may have just been unhappy that they didn't get the person that they wanted, but they were certainly there exactly know what they knew exactly what time it was and it almost like it infantiles women it makes them seem like they aren't somehow um complicit in their own actions and make it seem like they're completely just oh my god oh my god oh my god i don't know what i'm doing when they knew exactly what they were doing now i'm not going to argue or deny the fact that these horrible heinous acts takes place and that famous people themselves when they get to a certain level they feel like they're untouchable i'm not saying that doesn't happen at all but again let's not act like there aren't women out there who don't lie who use their feelings as justifications to do serious damage with false claims because they may have been unhappy about a certain situation that took place or how things ended. Let's not ignore these facts. So when you look at both cases and you look at the amount of women that came forward, because a lot of women came forward with all these stories on both sides, Benjamin Mendy, Noah Clark, all of them came forward. And when you just deep that there still wasn't enough evidence, despite witness 
witnesses coming on stands with like the evidence which they would have seen a lot more evidence than what we have, we would have got. We would have got snippets through the media, but they would have had all, a whole host of evidence. And despite all of that, despite all of the people who came forward, they still couldn't convict them. Surely that shows the weaknesses in their claims. Surely. And especially when you look at the climate we're in right now, I bet people were baying for a guilty verdict, but that wasn't delivered. But the truth of the matter is this. I really do hope that cases like this should just... I won't say sparks because, you know, men should know this already, but clearly they don't. But just re-energizes awareness back into a lot of men to use the big head, not the small head. Famous men especially because you have to take precautions nowadays because any false allegation can cause the end of your career, your reputation. And that's something that is it, it, it damn near impossible to fully get back. It's difficult to build a reputation. It's so easy for that to be destroyed. You've got to record all your interactions, get people to sign legal documentations, anything you can do to protect yourself in situations like this that can come out to harm you. You have to make sure that you protect yourself and not just yourself, protect other people around you because this will also come in handy if something else takes place. And guess what? We have the footage, we have more evidence. So you just got to make sure you just, just protect yourself at all times. Both parties need to make sure they're protected at all times. So I do say, and I do agree that the system heaven needs reforming. There needs to be better protection for both parties so that men and women feel free to come out. Because yes, men are also the victims of these heinous crimes too. I know that people don't want to believe that, but men are victims too. And also full anonymity until a guilty verdict comes out. Because this is a sensitive case and sensitive cases should be treated as such. Not trying to play to the gallery and public opinion, then decide exactly what I should be doing once this information has been released. No, this is a sensitive matter, a legal case. It should be treated exactly as such, we're talking about people's lives, people's livelihood. At the end of the day, once we've got something to talk about, we have our stories right here. The media will go to time with it. Our day will go on tomorrow and we won't think about it. These people have to live their lives. These people have to rebuild their lives. These people have to go on with whatever took place. So I'm like, these cases need to be treated as sensitive as such. But, you know, it is what it is in this obsessed world where everyone needs to be out there in the public opinion. Everything needs to be out there like this. This is what happens. So yes, the system needs reforming. There needs to be better protection because on situations like this in Benjamin Mendy, surely who can he come now and accuse? Should he be suing now? Should he be suing for loss of earnings, loss of potential earnings? Because this was a guy who was at the top of his career, playing a fantastic team who won it all last year, pretty much. Walk up winner, and now look at him. He's likely not going to be on the same wages he won now. He's likely not going to get back the same wages he won beforehand. So who does he go to now? What does he do now? Questions, questions, questions. But I listen, the system needs reforming. That's what I'll say. Let me know your thoughts on this. Until next time.